Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth so viewer discretion is advised but if you're not into that or weird stuff in general this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul but I'll remember our time fondly. Why hello my little blueberries. I'm so excited for today's video because I finally get to read the products that have done me really, really dirty to filth. I have tried many makeup products this year and, th and thankfully I have tried a lot of good ones. So my wallet is very thankful for that. But there are quite a few products, however. <laughs> That's making me very sour. So if you want to see my best in beauty, I'll link it in the corner. Keep in mind, it's a very, 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 very long video. So make sure you have your snacks. And speaking of a good segue, <laughs> I want to say thank you so much to Monk Pack for sponsoring today's madness. Y'all know how much I love Monk Pack. I've been talking about them for a while now. They offer low sugar, keto friendly bars that are plant based, gluten free, and non GMO. There are two types of bars you have your keto granola bar, or you have the nut and seed bar. Each bar contains about one gram of sugar, two to three net carbs, and each bar contains about 150 calories. But the best part, these taste so damn good. They're so good. These babies are not only delicious, but they're filling as well. Trust me when I say that these are not for those just eating keto. Keto. They're for anybody and everybody, whether you're trying to cut back on sugar or carbs without sacrificing the taste, or you just want a delicious snack. These are for you. These bars contain real ingredients that are good for you and the whole family. Now, I discovered these bars a long, long time ago when I used to work in an office. Well, a physical office, I should say that. <laughs> I'm in a virtual office now. And these little bars would get me through the day, especially when I would have to pretend to care about a coworker talking about their bunion surgery as I'm trying to remember why I need to hold on to this job. Mmm. Delicious. I love Monk Pack bars because they have amazing flavors. I swear, I have not tried a dud in the bunch. They have a soft and chewy texture and are just super indulgent that not only make for a great mid-afternoon snack, especially when you're a million miles away <laughs> because your soul left your body because Joanne cannot stop talking about her hammer toe, but a dessert as well. My favorites rotate obviously because I'm a Libra, but the ones that I've been like loving, especially on these long afternoons down here, <laughs> is the sea salt dark chocolate nut and seed bar. This so good it's so good but they have launched two new flavors that are just super decadent and just super divine and i think these to me are like more like my mid-morning snack or like my breakfast and that's the dark chocolate cocoa granola bar and the peanut butter cocoa chip these are easily becoming my new favorites in the morning so with that said listen stop eating inferior snacks monk pack is so confident in their product that they're backed by a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll exchange your product or refund your money whichever you prefer. That said, get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and using my code Teresa at checkout. Or simply click the link in the description down below to get 20% off. Thank you to Monk Pack for sponsoring today's video. Y'all go support the sponsors that support your garbage queen and get a good snack out of it. These videos are long and you need to be properly nourished, okay? Before I start and I get all like <sighs> fire demon dragon, you might like some of these products that I talk about. And listen, that's fine. Remember, we all have different opinions. We are all unique snowflakes. What works for me may not work for you, vice versa. That said, take this with a grain of salt. If you are getting visibly upset, go outside and touch some grass. <laughs> it does wonders to the mind and the body. And remember that when you get all upset, brands don't care. <laughs> They just see you as a dollar sign. Someone had to tell you. I'm glad that I was the one to tell you that, seriously. Go touch grass and chill out. It's all in fun, okay? All right. That said, I'm gonna start with complexion products because there was a lot of complexion products that were utter nonsense this year and I just need to yell about them. Starting with Jaclyn Cosmetics. Now listen, keep in mind, I don't have this product because I, I had to give it back. I, I just, I, I couldn't do, I couldn't do it. So you're gonna see some of the products I talk about. I'm just gonna link a picture in the corner because I just, I couldn't. I, I was just like, either I have to get rid of this in my house or I'm gonna get my money back, either one. So let's talk about the Skin Perfecting Blurring Tint or something like that. I think it's Skin Perfecting Blurring Tint. It was a very weird product. It, regardless of the name, it was a very weird product. See, allegedly it was like a blurring primer and a tinted moisturizer had a baby. And instead of it being like a delicious product, we just got this abomination. It's funny because this product provided no coverage, but when used with the foundation, it created so much buildup, I could easily pick it off and save it as a snack. And trust me when I say it wouldn't be as delicious as Monk Pack. <laughs> 
<laughs> Honestly, if I could strap this product to a rocket and shoot it at the sun, I would. But listen, I thought it couldn't get worse. It did, it did. Because you see, during the launch, the brand thought it would be a really great idea to release a concealer. And I believe it was called the Faux Filtering Perfecting Concealer. I never had a concealer that doubled as a grout sealer. Why put it on my face when I could fix the tiles in my bathroom? I've never had a product that was so tacky and so drying all at the same time. But that's not even the worst of it though. This product has the ability to never blend out. Instead, it creates a nice little whiteout patch under your eye. Cute, right? You know what's cuter? When the product slowly wears down and starts to eat at your flesh, and then it starts to oxidize to make it look like you haven't slept in 10 years. Who would have thought there was a price tag for that fucking experience? Which by the way is $26. <laughs> $26 to make it look like maggots are eating your face. Sign me the fuck up. Just saying. Anyway, so the next product I wanna talk about is this one. I don't get it. This is Jones Road. I wanted to try to be very careful opening it up because there is a level of oil <laughs> that's sitting on top of it. It reminds me of peanut butter, okay? And I've been trying to Oh, oh, no. <laughs> okay, down you go, baby. This is, this is, this is, this is oily. Oof. Oh, I hate it. I don't understand the hype of this product. I don't get it. It's weird. It's oily. It's reminding me of peanut butter. It feels like it's clay and it's mildly expensive clay at that. But if anything, though, it kind of makes you want to recreate the scene in Ghost. <laughs> But instead of like having clay, obviously use this as my medium. Me and Alex can have like a romantic moment anyway. <laughs> and listen, maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I'll just have a couple of drinks, order a Lazy Susan and I'll just go to town. And maybe at the end of it, I'll have a nice fucking drug. And maybe that's what this is supposed to be. A product where you could pretend to have the ghost moment with your loved one. I don't think that's what it's supposed to do. I think this is supposed to be a foundation. How can something be so sticky and provide no coverage at all? This is thick oily and so messy. What the foundation? More like what the fuck is this? From all the love online, it sounds like a non-disclosed ad to me. So the next one, it's not with me. And this one broke my heart. We have Miss Charlotte Tilbury. Listen, it started with so much promise. Oh my God, it started with so much promise. The beautiful skin foundation, oof. It started with so much promise and ultimately turned me into a zombie apocalypse. The claims of it being worn up to 16 hours is such bullshit, it's not even funny. The fact that it's supposed to like look so perfect for 16 hours is such a crock of shit. This lasted for a good six, seven hours. And while it looks okay, as soon as I had it on for one minute, two long, it would break down with a fiery passion. My dry skin turned into pools of grease. It was so bad that I contemplated opening a ghost kitchen on Uber Eats because I could fry so much shit on my face. But that wasn't the worst of it. This shit not only oxidized to be almost problematic, but it broke me out to boot. The only way this product could be worse is if this product tells me it's having an affair with my husband. So like, get the fuck out of here. No, thank you. <laughs> you were not welcomed in this house. You know, for the longest time, I always thought Say was overrated because I never really found a product that worked for me. And then I discovered their blushes and bronzers and I was like, okay, I get it. Maybe I was a little too hard on this brand. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> I thought Charlotte was a greasy mess until I tried this one. This is the Slip Tint Tinted Moisturizer. God damn. The best way I can describe this product is the floor of a glory hole. And if you know, you know. This product literally pisses out when it's applied. And then it goes to dry to grease in a matter of seconds. And there's no return from it. This doesn't have the emotional ability to love you and melt into the skin to make it look like your skin, but better. Instead, you might as well be walking around with a fucking wet paint sign on your face because it's never gonna dry, despite it looking dry. Who has time for that? Not me or you, that's for damn sure. But that wasn't even the worst of it, okay? There is, ugh, there is a concealer <laughs> that goes along with it. So this is, I don't even know the name of this concealer. It doesn't even matter, okay? The concealer is supposed to be radiant with the capability of smoothing and blurring your under eye. Ha! This shit is white out. And I actually started using it as white out. <laughs> and honestly, it just works so much better than Bic. Bic could learn something from Say, just saying. And listen, Say, if all else fails, I will totally buy your stationary supplies because you're sitting on a fucking gold mine. This concealer is so dry, it's impossible to blend, and the coverage is barely existent, which makes no sense. Like I said before, when talking about this product, this is the final destination of concealers. This will show you your death, okay? So stay away. 
Speaking of that, the new Lancome foundation that came out this year, this is supposed to be hydrating with a natural finish. No, <laughs> it's anything but. If you're in the market for cement, babe, look no further. This will hang on to every dry patch and every mistake you've had for the last 10 years. The more you put on, the more dry you become. I tried so hard to make this work and no matter what I would do, my skin would ultimately just look dull and lifeless. This is a product that I would recommend if I didn't like you. <laughs> <sighs> this has to be one of the worst foundations I've ever tried. And in that same vein, I want to talk about Patrick Ta. So this is the major skin cream foundation and powder. No, bitch, no. This was terrible. If you have dry skin, stay the fuck away from this product. The cream is on the thicker side and it doesn't do the best job melting into the skin. If anything, it just kind of sits on top of it. Basically adding more unnecessary weight to your face. And you really have no choice but to set it down with powder because it transfers so goddamn much. If you do use the god awful powder that's tied to it, ugh, this is so dry. This is so fucking dry. Ugh. Rest assured, if you do use this, this is going to be the biggest mistake of your life. Ugh. Not only is this so powdery, but it clings to every dry patch you may have. Every piece of texture you're trying to hide, it will find everything and just emphasize the shit out of it. I tried so hard, so hard to make this work. But every time, no matter if I was using a different powder or a different primer, the results were always the same. I always looked like a dried up mummy's dick and it wasn't cute. So this is a no for me, fam. Okay, so moving on to products that just should have never been made. <laughs> Let's talk about some setting sprays. I'm gonna go back to good old Jacqueline Cosmetics. <laughs> We're gonna go back. She came out with the all set setting spray and it sounded cool because it was supposed to like set, prime and protect. It doesn't do any of that. It doesn't know what any of that means. Instead, it just gives you that spicy butthole feel. You know what I'm talking about. So in ways, this product is actually mace. <laughs> So when you spray it on your face, you're actually macing yourself. So maybe it actually isn't a bad product. <laughs> no, it's bad. But that's not even the best part because it leaves your skin so tight, so tight it hurts. Like you think like, oh, maybe I should call 911. Like it's a problem. Sure, you might have a slight radiance because you're sweating. <laughs> because you're like, this shouldn't feel like this. But honestly, no one will ever know the excruciating pain your skin feels as it's trying to eat itself. It's terrible. Also it gives me horrible acne too. I don't know what was in it, terrible. But ironically enough, that wasn't the worst setting spray. That of work goes to super goop. <sighs> So this is the Resetting Refreshing Mist. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is described as a weightless, multitasking makeup setting mist. And it's supposed to help with refreshing your makeup, UV rays, and all that jazz. It sounds really good. However, this is basically a $32 bottle of I Can't Believe It's Not Butter Spray. And I know that because I ate a lot of this. <laughs> Not by choice, okay? Not by choice. It's not like I was spraying this on my Hungry Man dinners, okay? <laughs> I took this product with me so many times to Disney. And when I tell you that this ran down my face into my eyes, so much so that it almost blinded me, it was a problem. But every time I did that, it legit tasted like I can't believe it's not butter. The stuff is so greasy. It's so disgusting. It makes your makeup just like swim all over your face. It's horrible. So yeah, in ways, I actually can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> Like, I just can't. It's just that good. Oof, 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 oof. Let's switch gears and just talk about some products that I just, I don't quite understand. They don't really make any sense to me. These are like the primers, the highlighters, the lighter coverage option things, the things that I'm like, I don't know what you are. These products are trying to be so many things at once and it caused its detriment. Starting with Fenty. Oof, mm -mm. The Ease Droplet All Over Glow Enhancer. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I tried it as a primer, a skin tint, a highlighter. I even put it on my asshole. I don't know what this is. I don't know what it's supposed to do. There were a couple of moments where I just like saw a glimmer of something, but the more I used it, the more I realized it was a complete fluke. <laughs> For something with the word glow in the title, it should be that. It's not. Not whatever this sticky shit is. And listen, I don't care what you say, but that e.l.f. product, <laughs> that halo glow, that is not a Charlotte Tilbury dupe. I don't care what you say. I don't give a shit because I know it's not true. This product is tinted spackle. Do you need to fill a hole in the wall? Use this. Don't put this on your face. There is no glow, there is no radiance. Like I said when I reviewed this product, I glow more after birthing out food demons, okay? After eating some Taco Bell, I'm a goddamn goddess, okay? <laughs> 
I'm a glowy goddess compared to this product or whatever the hell it did try to do to my face anyway. But the one that I really don't understand, I still don't understand and I cannot wait to declutter it, is from Makeup by Mario. Can't even fucking open it. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. This multi-purpose product is supposed to be a bronzer, a highlighter, and a setting powder. This has no purpose. It's a product that just makes you look sweaty and glittery. The powder is so chunky that it's almost like chalk and I'm starting to concern if this is asbestos. <laughs> Like, it's reminding me of my days in grade school, okay? <laughs> what, you didn't have asbestos in your school? You're missing out. Anyway, but seriously, prove me otherwise. This is so weird and powdery and chunky and it just, it just does not feel right. This is something that should have never been made and I personally hold this product responsible for 2022 being a shitty year. You know, when it comes to bronzers, blushes, and highlighters, I found a lot of good ones. And thankfully, I only have to talk about a few that were just not good. Starting with the kimchi bronzer. This was horrible. This was horrible. This was so orange that it transported me back to 2007. That's not the worst part of it though. When blending it out, it blended into nothing. I love a magic trick for $16. Now the other one, <sighs> I tried y'all. Simi Hayes Beauty, I can't. They are the king of the chode packaging, that's for sure. And most of this brand's aesthetic has that micro penis kind of a feel. However, the Solar Tint Blush Duo looks like it's soap that was carved in prison. Which, listen, I kind of like the aesthetic of that. I think it's kind of cute. But this product, which retails for $42, has two formulas. You have like a cream side and kind of like a, a matte side. but. Honestly, the matte side even kind of feels like a cream. It's, it's very confusing, but it doesn't matter. Whatever side you use, you're gonna have the same result. They're not easy to blend and they pick up the product that's underneath. No matter how often I try to use these products, I hate how they look. The formula brings nothing to the party and it annoys me so much so that I need to put another blush on to just try to get rid of it. <laughs> This was like a massive waste of money. And even though I did get it technically on a discount with the Sephora sale, yeah, I fucking hard now. <laughs> Still too expensive. Honestly, this brand overall kind of just feels very try hard in my opinion. And I really don't look forward to what they're gonna be doing in 2023. I don't care. I just don't care. This is all I needed to know and you got nothing. Okay. Now, speaking of shitty blushes, Patrick Ta, babe. Oh my God, this was so bad. My sweet angel baby, this was such a huge mess. I love their blush formula, but this just wasn't it. I don't know what the fuck this was. A lot of it was just like chunky and glittery. There was little to no pigment at times. And honestly, I just don't understand how it passed quality control. Obviously somebody was drinking in the job and no wonder why it's quickly half off. <laughs> It's like they can't even give this shit away. This was a joke, an expensive joke at that, that I seriously cannot just wait to declutter because I'm gonna look forward to it. See you in hell, buddy. See you in hell. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about one of the worst highlighters that I've tried this year. That's from One Size. Oof. Listen, I love that Fantasia collection. I think it's really great. It was actually featured in my best of video because I love that palette and I stand by that palette. This though, this was just like, what the fuck was this? Uh -uh. This is the first makeup product that almost wears off instantly. I don't even know how they patent that technology, but if this gets into the wrong hands, God help us all. But you know what? Listen, the one that really broke my heart, oof, that really broke my heart, the MAC palette. Palette. Listen, I lost it after this product. I, as soon as it was released, I stocked that Ulta page. Ooh, I don't even think it ever came into stock because I had to purchase it from Dillard's. The Effervescence Extra Dimension Face Palette. Mm, 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 mm. Talk about being let down. Like this is bad. When I tried it in my video initially, I was kind of like, well, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> Not quite what I wanted, but like, well, maybe I can make it work. No, no, no. I'm tired of fucking being nice. <laughs> This was a massive waste of time. And even though I do love their highlighters, these highlighters, you know, they weren't, they were meh. You know, I feel like I've had better MAC highlighters in my collection. And the bronzer, the bronzer was so fucking warm and orange. Ugh. No thank you. And it's just another one that just looks so fucking unnatural on your skin. Again, I'm just so let down how disappointing this whole experience was. I was so excited to get it that I was so sure that it was gonna be amazing and to find out that it was anything but. Ooh, bitch. You know, I said I hold that product personally responsible. No, I hold this personally responsible for the shitty year that is 2020. Ooh, 2020, I went back into time. Holy fuck, 2022 and 2020 and 2021. Basically the last three years. <laughs> I hold, this is the reason why everything was so bad. You.
So last but certainly not least, let's talk about some eyeshadow palettes. They're the eyeshadow palettes that do the opposite of what you need them to do. Some might have longevity, some might be super repetitive, some might have inferior formula that leaves you scratching your head, wondering how the fuck you paid so much money for this. And the first one goes to Pat McGrath. <laughs> Honestly, I did not like any of the palettes that I tried from Pat McGrath this year. I don't, I just don't think they were that great. The Bridgerton palette was a complete nightmare. Number two, that is. It was basically a copy pasta that nobody wanted. The Holiday palette was a huge disappointment for me. The formula was dry and I felt like I was getting carpal tunnel for jerking it off so much. So just trying to get it to blend. But the worst part of it all, after all that blending, it would disappear after a fucking hour. It's almost like the eyeshadows know how bad they are. So to save... <laughs> themselves embarrassment, they decide to disappear off your face. Good luck trying to find them, they're gone. Speaking of high-end garbage, let's talk about Guerlain, Guerlain, whatever. That brand had the balls to charge $85 to be a glorified makeup remover. Think about it. These shadows had such a beautiful finger swatch. Ooh, bitch, they were so delicious. But apparently they were allergic to my brushes because I couldn't get fucking pigment on them. I tried and I tried and I tried and what I was left with was a smudge. A smudge that didn't even fucking last. So again, what am I paying $85 for? Now for something slightly more affordable, <laughs> <sighs> Hi, kid. Let's talk about Shantikai. This is the Cougar. Oof. Mm -mm. For $10 less, you can have yet another glorified overrated makeup remover. It was messy, it was patchy, and I'm getting a chub thinking about decluttering this. Oof, bitch. I'm so excited. <laughs> This is expensive for no reason. And while I do love the palette design, like I think this is gorgeous, this is a monstrosity. This was awful. Now something a little less expensive, but still is equally as terrible. And I'm really mad about this one. We're gonna talk about Dior. This is the backstage khaki palette. Why are satin eyeshadows a thing? Like what, why is that? Why are people making that a thing? Like why, why? Who is okaying satin eyeshadows? <laughs> Let's make a palette that has no range and everything looks the same. And we're gonna include some weird eyeshadow primer in it too. So that like, as soon as you close it down, all the little like flakes and shit will get into that eye primer, really kind of causing a disgusting mess. And only some people may be able to use it, not all. Why give you another eyeshadow when you basically don't even have to use this? Okay, like why, why would we do that? Why would we give you more? No, 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 you deserve less. <laughs> Oh, you, you want sparkle? You want sparkle? Well, us too. Instead, try this farting of shimmer that will make you question your station in life. Good luck trying to get sparkled out of that. This should be renamed as Dior's existential crisis because that's what I was having when I was using it. Now let's talk about some affordable garbage. We love affordable on this channel. And I'm gonna start with our Lord and Savior ColourPop. Daddy, I am so sorry, please don't be mad at me. Listen, ColourPop is usually hit or miss for me, but the clay cool, you know, it just was not for me, fam. I know this was the answer to like all the rosy, like mauve palettes that came out this year. This was so incredibly one note. And no matter how many times I used it, I looked like I had pink eye. I'm sure my coworkers were questioning who was farting on my my pillow last night when I would show up to these Zoom water cooler meetings. These shadows didn't offer any range. If anything, they turned into kind of like patchy, muddy messes and the longevity was garbage. So on the bright side, another glorified makeup remover, but at a cheaper price point. <laughs> but I think the worst palettes I tried this year were from Moira and I don't have them in my possession because I decluttered them fairly recently. And I think if I were to have them in person right now, I would lose my shit. <laughs> See, I picked them up because I, I just, I wanna like Nabla, okay? I think Nabla creates really beautiful eyeshadow palettes. However, their quality never worked for me. So I picked these up because they were giving me the vibe of it. Now I've tried Moira palettes in the past and they've been fine. Some palettes have been really, really good and some palettes have been okay, but still, very, very workable. And I never had an issue quite like this. No matter which palette I used, all did the same thing. I would dig and dig and dig and dig and keep digging into the pan, hoping to get a beautiful amount of pigment. And while my bristles were covered in such just beautiful shades, I would lay it down on the lid and then poof, it was gone. So I would go back and dig a little bit deeper, a little bit harder, if you will. And you know what would happen when I'd go back for a second, third, or fourth, or even a fifth time. Nothing, nothing fucking happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> I put it on and it would fuck 
fucking disappear. What is that bullshit? I don't know why 2022 is the year of this innovative technology <laughs> where things just disappear as you put them on, but it's bullshit, bullshit. Do you know how much of a mind fuck that is? I, I would switch primers, I would have no primers, I anything, all the same shit, all the same results every fucking time. And that's not even the worst of it. I can't even say like, oh, well, at least the shimmers were fine. No, both did that. No matter if it was a matte or a shimmer, anytime it would touch my lid, it would just Thanos into the fucking air, okay? At least the Guerlain palette, that one, at least pissed out a little bit of sparkle for me. Moira did nothing, nothing of the sort. Obviously Moira had better things to do than to be on my face. And that's why they're decluttered. <sighs> anyway, that was the worst shit I tried this year. Fuck that, fuck them, no. Anyway, and there you have it. Those are the worst things that I've tried this year that literally get my blood boiling. Please let me know down below if you share some of the same products or if you have different products, let me know because I love hearing from you. And again, thank you so much to Monk Pack for sponsoring today's video. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and to my beautiful patron and YouTube members. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross, really nasty actually, garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do it without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces. I just want to gobble you all up so we can live inside my belly and we could be one and it'd be a great old time. And I just, I just think you're adorable. If you want to know what is currently on my face, everything you need to know will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye.